What's going on? It's Jeff Newbert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to cover the topic, what do you do on your off days for your kettlebell workouts? Or said another way, what are some off day options I can use for my kettlebell workouts? All right. So why are we discussing this today? Well, quite frankly, it's because I've been getting a rash of emails lately asking me a variation of the following question. It goes like this. Jeff, what can I do on my off days or what should I do on my off days, right? As if there's something that, uh, you know, you should be doing. Otherwise, the workout police are going to come and get you maybe. I don't know. But uh, I can only conclude that these poor guys, and I, listen, I'm not casting aspersions or judgments at these fellas, but they're suffering from what I call off day guilt, right? <laughs> so it's uh, especially a common occurrence in the kettlebell world. And I think that's probably because many of us, myself included, come from a what I call a hard worker background, right? So, uh, you know, if you use our air quotes here, what we like to do, hard worker. We're hard workers. By golly, that gummit, I'm a hard worker. That's what I do is I work hard, right? When we were younger, we worked hard, right? Everything was about working hard, right? There was a reward for working hard, whether it was in practice or the early days of your career, right? Practice it was who showed up earliest and who left latest, right? Same thing, early days of career, right? Especially if you're in the finance world, right? You show up you're the first guy that shows up at, at the broker's firm. Well, then your big boss notices that. And if you're the last guy who leaves, well, your big boss notices that too, right? That type of, of mentality. In fact, maybe you've, maybe you've heard this mantra, I'll rest when I'm dead. Not stupid because you're not resting, you're dead. Uh, point is, <clears throat> and the problem with this, this philosophy, right? Or this way of thinking or this mindset, whatever you call it, is that we're just not young anymore, at least not that young. Uh, there have been days, I don't know if you're like me, right, where you've you've woken up and you're feeling like half dead. You feel like you were run over by a Mack truck, okay? And maybe there's other days when you felt like the walking dead. Yeah, but the point is, you know, many of us, right, maybe I'm not talking to you, maybe you can relate and maybe you can, but you feel guilty when you take days off from working out, right? Like you just got to work out all the time. You know, somehow three days a week, four days a week, and for some of us, even five days a week, it does not seem like enough, right? Air quotes again, enough. It just doesn't seem like enough. It seems like if you're not working out, you're not making progress. And the unfortunate part is that, that many of us, we just intuitively know that we should take at least one day off, maybe more because, yeah, well, we know theoretically that your body actually recovers on the off days and that's where you make the progress, right? It's not in the gym. Being in the gym, slinging your kettlebells or doing whatever out on the track running, that's where you create the stimulation that creates the adaptation, right? Which creates the results that you're looking for. But yeah, that, that whole work hard thing, we're hard workers, right? It's just gives us that sense of guilt, right? And, uh, you know, for some people, I'm not saying this is me, right? But I'm sure you know somebody like this, or maybe you've experienced this yourself, but the, the guilt, right? Or the shame of not training can be too much to bear. And so, you know, you, you buy one program and it's a three day a week program, and then you find another program on the internet and you go, oh, let me see if I can take these two programs and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix them together, right? Or you know, I'm sure that's never happened to you. I've, I've never done anything like that, right? Especially not in the past. Or uh, maybe this is you, or maybe you know somebody or have a friend who likes to program in variety days, you know, uh, days where you're supposed to work on complementary lifts and complementary exercises to, to your main goal and your main focus. But uh, truth be told, we are, you know, your friend, excuse me, looks for ways just to do variations of our favorite. I mean, his, his favorite exercises, right? Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, if you do stick around because I've got a solution that will take care of you, right? As rain. So that begs a very important question. How do we overcome this pain, this suffering, this guilt, the shame for taking days off? It's really simple. And I know some of you are, you're going to like this answer. It's very simple. We stop taking days off right now you might be thinking jeff you're you're the recovery you, you're always talking about recovery man and you just talked about in this video about you know it's uh it's when you take time off that you recover i get it so here's what we're going to do you're still going to train three four maybe five days a week okay if your body can recover and your workouts or your training programs are short enough but on the days that you're not hoisting swinging tossing lifting smashing your kettlebells you're actively you're ruthlessly and you're methodically focusing on finding, fixing, and erasing your weaknesses. Just like there are two sides to every story, right? There And there are two sides to the force. You are now like the force. You're now going to bring balance to your own personal force. You know all those parts that are stiff? You know those parts that are chronically tight? You know those parts of your body that 
that hurt when you bend them and you try and shake it off. You're like, that ah, doesn't really hurt, but it hurts, right? Yeah, those, those are what I'm talking about. You're going to restore their function to the best of your ability. So here's what that means. When you're not slinging your kettlebells, so let's say you sling your kettlebells on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you're going to focus on the following. One, you're going to focus on rebuilding your core strength and eliminating your low back pain. Two, you're going to re work on restoring your shoulder range of motion so you can press overhead without pain in the front of your shoulder or anywhere, <laughs> as a matter of fact, in your shoulders. Okay. Number three, all right, you're going to spend some time mobilizing your hips so you can swing, snatch, and hinge properly without your low back griping at you afterwards. You're going to spend some time opening up your rusty, hunched over upper back so you can relieve the pressure on your shoulders and your lower back. Now, finally, here's the weirdest one of all. You're going to focus on screwing your head back on top of your body and moving it up and down and side to side the way it was meant to move instead of letting it hang out in front of your body like this, right? All right how, many, how, many, how much time do you spend doing this, right? Get the old text neck, right? So we're going to reverse all those issues. We're going to spend time. And if you only have one of those issues, great. Spend your time focused on that. Okay. And if you don't have any of those issues, well, God bless you. You just haven't worked hard enough in the past, right? So, which is probably a good thing. You've worked smarter rather than harder. Does this sound boring to you, right? Yeah, it probably does because it, it sounded boring to me until that's all I could do. And I was forced to do that at the tender young age of 32. Okay. And look, I'll admit this stuff is nowhere near as exciting as putting heavy stuff over your head. But I think that's only because we failed to realize that we could naturally do these things when we were in our teens and early 20s, okay? But the stresses of life, uh, sitting all day long, injuries, they caught up to us and they have robbed us of our once natural movements. And so you know what happens when we start taking these natural movements back and getting them back through active restoration and recovery methods? Well, we start feeling younger again, right? We start feeling like our old young selves, again. And what does that mean for kettlebell workouts and any other kind of workout you want to do? Well, the weights actually start feeling lighter again and the workouts actually become easier, which then means you get to work harder, right? Of course, work harder and smarter. Now, look, let me be straight up with you. You might be wondering, well, will we ever hit our 23-year-old selves PRs, right? Those numbers used to hit half a lifetime ago or more? Maybe not, or maybe so, or maybe probably not, or probably so. Hard to say. But one thing is for sure, if we don't actively start pursuing our own restoration, rebuilding our walls, so to speak, then we stand zero chance of setting any PRs and accelerate the chances of painting ourselves into the proverbial corner where nothing works the way it used to. Make sense? All right. So let's get after it. What you decide to use for restoration work is up to you. Okay. Just as long as it meets these two criteria, right? First, you do something and... More importantly, second, you can measure your improvements from doing that something. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you want to see what I use for my restoration work on my off days, I actually use it for warmups too. And what I recommend to my private clients, I'll leave a link in the description below. And, uh, you know, if your cowbell programs have stalled out, I'll leave the links to a couple in the description below too that uh, my other customers have really enjoyed and reported getting good results from. All right. So again, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, click the like button. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. If you found it really helpful and it really resonated with you, well, click the share button so other people can uh, benefit from it as well. All right. Until next time, my friend, stay strong.